Well, as we're waiting for folks to come on in, should I think we have a small enough group. Maybe we can do introductions one at a time, just talk a little yeah. bit about where practice is at and what we focus on. Uh, Jesse, let me pick on you first. Tell us a little bit about your practice. Hey there. Um, we are, uh, my wife and I have a practice together. We have one assistant. We do criminal defense and um, rights restoration. So expungements, helping people get felonies off their record, restoring firearm rights, which is a, a busy, high volume kind of practice. And we're moving, um, and Harry's helping us. We're moving a lot more into that than just doing retained hourly work, um, doing this flat fee kind of a lot of client kind of case. Cool. Logo. Product productize. Awesome. Um, and where's where did you say your practice was at? Where are you located? In Springfield, Oregon. Got it. Cool. Uh, Tamara, how's it going? Good, thank Looks you. Like, good. What about you? Where's your practice at? Um, so I practice in Ottawa, Ontario, in Canada. Cool. And um, I practice strictly in immigration and citizenship law. We're a specialty boutique firm. We're uh, three lawyers, a student, and a office manager. Very cool. Great. Uh, Tom, how's it going? Hey, good. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, volume's a little bit low, but I think we can hear okay. you just fine. All right. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tom Golden. I'm an attorney out in uh, Michigan practicing from, uh, as you can see behind me, uh, the, the loft in our house where in the 70s, apparently nobody believed in insulation. So the heater <laughs> might kick on. Um, but uh, yeah, I do uh, mostly social security disability work, about 80% of that. And then the other 20% is uh, FDCPA or consumer protection type, uh, type things. Cool. Okay. That's a big chunk of our practice too. Awesome. Um, great. Clark, how's it going? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Good. I'm a bankruptcy and estate planning attorney in Denver. Very cool. Great. Welcome. Uh, Robin, how's it going? Robin, if you're there, it looks like you might be muted. Oh, cool. All good. Cool. Do you want to uh, type in the chat where where you're at and kind of what your what your uh, practice is focused on? I think she's based in Toronto and she does immigration. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Clark, did we hit on you? I'm sorry, my. Maybe, maybe it tells you something about the state of my memory. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bankruptcy and estate planning attorney in Denver. Got it. Okay, thanks. And uh, forgive me if I mispronounce this, Francis. Where's where's your practice, and what do you focus on? Hi, I primarily focus on trademarks, and I'm based in Austin, Texas. Awesome. Cool. And Sharomi, what about you? Where's your practice and what do you focus on? He's an office employee. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's, gotcha. He's, he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, Harry, if it's okay with you, I think we can probably boot up. Yes, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, to introduce myself, my name is Mike Ziegler. We have a firm in Clearwater, Florida. We focus on debtors' rights, bankruptcy, uh, FDCPA type uh, practice, and debt defense type practice. We have an office about of, of about 10, 10 people. Um, and so Harry and I uh, really have talked with great frequency over the course of the last couple of years that I've been a LACUS user. And I think my perspective is a little bit unique because I, I started off as a computer science major before switching over to law. And so a lot of times um, I, I place a lot of thought in terms of how we can use products like Locus to kind of augment what we're doing. And so, um, so I saw, you know, Harry and I were, were talking about some stuff that we were working on with different Locus Zapier integrations 
And I really kind of wanted to beat the war drum to have a conversation just like what we're having so that we could all could start to benefit from groupthink on how to really kind of max out the benefits that Walkis provides. Um, so I wanted to kind of um, show you guys a little bit of what we're doing and leave a couple of open discussion topics, but really start to kind of kindle a fire on uh, everyone working um, kind of collaboratively in different ways that we can kind of benefit from Blockus's tools. Um, so to dive right in, most of um, today's conversation is really focused around the leads, the different leads components, you know, as you all know, as um, uh, owners or, or influencers in your respective law firms, uh, while, uh, of course, getting the work out the door and, and doing it well is, is incredibly, incredibly valuable, the bills get paid through marketing and through retention. And so, uh, at least in, in my firm, that is kind of most of where my, my attention is at and want to share at least some of what we've been doing to um, really benefit from Blockus's, uh automation. So uh, let me start with um, presenting. So, uh, so just to kind of, be, particularly because this is a recorded um, conversation. I just took some various screenshots from within Locus instead of working within the live environment. So I'm not accidentally sharing some stuff that is relevant. Um, uh, but so let me start by just going over and I'll kind of touch on some of these topics, talk to you guys a little bit about at least how we're doing it and then kind of open the conversation, see if anyone has some other ideas that they find are working well for them. Um, so let me start within the lead screen, and this is something that presumably you all have already seen. So within our lead screen, we've broken that up into stages in much the same way as cages are, uh, cases are typically broken up into stages. Uh, so at least for us, the stages that we have developed are what we call the admin stage, where the, which is where there's no automation uh, and so if we're getting like a live call, then, um, and, and we're, we're kind of like real time adding them, you know, talking to them as we're adding their data into Locus, then we don't want that potential client to get messages about, hey, please call me for a consultation when they're actually talking to me. So we wanted a stage where nothing's happening, but we can kind of house the potential client. We have a stage that we call prospect, which is someone who has not yet scheduled a consultation, but has maybe sent us an email or said that they want some more information. We have a stage called consultation set, where of course the consultation is already scheduled. Um, if they miss the consult, then we have a miss consultation stage. And then we have varying post uh, Sorry, let me see if I can get this so you all can see it. Um, post consult stages, one for if they've requested a representation agreement, one if they have not requested a representation agreement. And then we have a stage that is specifically for our folks uh, that do our FDCPA work to review to see if, they, if there's a viable claim that they can proceed on. Um, let me, let me use this as kind of a pause point. Uh, do, do any of you all use stages in your lead section? Have any of you all kind of done it differently or, or kind of found different stages that you find to be valuable? So I'll just say that I've been with Locus for several months, a number of months, but I'm totally lost and I haven't been able to do anything yet. So I'm just trying to get an idea. Of cool. Well, that's, that's it. You know, we're, this is, this is us growing, growing as a group. Yeah. I know that it has just like tremendous potential, but I'm totally lost. <laughs> well, so I'll, I'll say, and I guess just to elaborate a little bit more, 
breaking our prospects up into these different stages is hugely valuable. And part of our research before moving over to Locke is, you know, we were initially, our, our concept was to have both a case management system, but then to have a separate system for, um, for dealing with leads. And when you look at kind of some of the more advanced softwares that um, businesses use that are more sales intensive, it, it kind of looks like this, where there's a ton of automation that's built into it, where you can give leads different scoring, uh, so you know which ones to kind of prioritize as you're following up on them. And so... So what Harry is is kind of building towards really is pretty awesome functionality to have kind of all in one house within the Locus system. Um, so so just kind of a few things to narrate in at least the way that we have this built. So um, so at almost all the stages except for the admin stage, usually there is some sort of uh, messaging that goes out to the potential client that helps to augment what we're trying to accomplish in that particular stage. So at the prospect stage where they're not yet scheduled, we'll have emails and text messages that will say, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I saw that you were interested in the consultation, please schedule here. And they'll have a link to Calendly. Um, in consultation set, although there's not a whole lot of messages in there, we, we do have some messages that basically, you know, tell people what to do to get prepared for the consultation. Um, in the missed consult, that has been hugely, hugely helpful for us to recover folks that, you know, presumably, particularly post-COVID, most of you are probably doing consultations by phone, uh, for better or worse, particularly in a consumer practice. Sometimes those calls just don't connect. And, um, and so when we move clients into that missed consult stage and we have messages that say, hey, we, we just missed you, reschedule here, we recover a lot of consultations that way. And kind of the messaging um, goes on and on. Uh, what I'll get to in just a moment, one, one of the coolest parts, I think, of what we've set up is that particularly in that consultation set, um, uh, stage, most of that data we're, we're never typing into the system. Most of that is going in automatically through Calendly. And so like, like, and, and I'll, I'll expand on that momentarily. So I guess before I switch topics, uh, does anyone have anything to add? Well, I, I, I would like to, I would like for there to be a way for people to add their documents to the lead section because I review documents before I agree to a consultation. Um, I, I don't know if I've put that in Trello or not. Um, I think but I did set up a workflow. We, we are relatively new to Locus, very new to Locus. I did set up a workflow to automatically generate an invoice through um, the lead section though because our consultations oh, are all filled. That's cool. Very cool idea. I, I believe in Harry, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think you can, and, and I'm not in the live environment, but I think if you click on an individual lead file and open up the info screen, uh, which looks... Yeah, I think Tamara, you can you can upload documents on the lead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're in the info screen, it, are you all able to see this? Do you see my kind of copy? Okay, give them thumbs up. Right. I can upload. I want the client to be able to upload. I want them oh, to be able to upload. Got it. Uh, Harry, is is that is there client portal access within the leads area that I'm not aware of? Leads, I think we, they don't, we are not, yeah. we are not giving access. To okay. Them. So I think, you know, um, probably that would be possible. So, so one of the things I like about Locus is because it has the Zapier integration, you know, most everything is possible. It's just about thinking creatively of how to connect a lot of times multiple programs. So I, I think you could probably 
have Locus send out like an, an automated email and ask the client to attach um, a document to the email and then upload it into the file that way. So that's maybe a different way of doing it. Um, you know, if you had other systems, if you were working in, I'm trying to think like, like if you work within G Suite, which is what we use, you might be able to attach like a form or have Locus attach a form and ask the client to upload the document within the Google form or, or any, you know, there's, there's probably a hundred different form programs out there. So I think that's, that's probably very doable. It just may take a little bit of stitching together. Um, but like that you're, so you're sending out the, um, the invoice as part of your, your onboarding process. And are you having that paid through like law pay? No, not yet. We, we do a payment by e-transfer over the phone by credit card. Got it. Okay, cool. Very cool. Uh, let's see. This is, this is Clark Dray. It looks like a lead has that Google Drive access. I wonder if you can <clears throat> share a link to that Google Drive folder and have them upload to that directly, if that wouldn't be a, an easy workaround. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's another, another good approach. Uh, and we're big fans of Google Drive, so with you on that. Also, what you can do is you can create a form which they can upload the documents. So you can use that approach as well. So send a link to them to the form, like an online form, and they can upload documents to it. And you can, like, you can use that approach as well, yeah. Uh, okay. Harry, with those, um, I w I've been thinking about doing that as an automation. Uh, just say, you know, automate an email and just says, you know, do you have any forms you want to send me? Click here and then upload it. Would that then be tied to the person's name without them inputting their information again? You can. Yes, you can. So you can go to the forms and you can link to, to the custom fields as well. And once you use the, the workflows to do it, you can link it with the, with the matter or the client as well. Yes. And, and I'm going to try to make notes as we're talking here of some good follow-up topics uh, and forms and data gathering is a great one. All right. So, uh, all right. So, that's at least our overview of stages. Now, the one place where I did want to show you guys a little bit of a live environment is within Zapier. So for anyone who doesn't know, Zapier is kind of like, like software glue. It is a way of taking two programs and two softwares and allowing them to kind of integrate together that might not integrate together, together natively. So as most of you know, uh, Locus has a number of um, programs that it connects with natively, like Google Drive, like QuickBooks, like LawPay. But really, to me, the power of Locus is really with Zapier. So like we talked about, there's a bunch of different stages within Locus. There's a bunch of different things that it can do. And you know, particularly if you're on the matter side, but also in the lead side, you can have it set up so that if you are switching between different stages or if you're accomplishing different things, then that might trigger um, other programs entirely. And that's usually done through Zapier. So where, where we've been really the most excited to develop Zapier in the last few months, and this is particularly with some of the developments within Locus, um, kind of through Zapier, where they've kind of added a bunch of additional functionality, is uh, is different ways of adding potential clients directly into Locus without the need to manually input the information. So, a great example of that is we have um, a call center that helps to answer some of our phones and particularly after hours. And so usually, and so they have access uh, through Calendly 
uh, to our calendars and they can directly schedule appointments. So when they do that, we have a connection between Calendly and Locus. And so, um, so the way that it is set up and b- before I realize I'm totally lost or, uh, are you guys able to see this? Mostly thumbs up. Cool. Uh, so, so to kind of break this down pretty, pretty granularly. So we have it set up so that if a appointment, a consultation appointment is created within Calendly, we then, um, we have different Calendly events that correspond to different lead sources. So if you're not familiar with Calendly, you can embed it into different web pages. You can embed it uh, into your Google My Business listing. Um, you can use it. Most of the call centers will um, schedule through Calendly. And what you can do is you can give each place where you have your Calendly appointment a slightly different name for the event. And by doing that, you can kind of draw, you can help to identify where the lead is coming from. So for our general uh, website leads, we have them labeled as debt freedom strategy session. We have uh, a filter created to specify that it's the step freedom strategy session. We use different actions within Zapier to kind of uh, un- unbundle some of the information that is in the Calendly event. And then from that, uh, I'm giving a good, good example here, but um, oh, right, this from that, and I'm going to kind of go backwards here. We create a lead within Locus, and and we draw out that same information from the event. But because we know the lead source is from our website, which uh, which we know because of the name of the calendar event, within the Locus lead entry, we're able to specify the lead source as website. And that information is super valuable because one thing that if you're not doing it already, you really should be doing is on a recurring basis. And at least for me, it's monthly. For most people, I know it's monthly, but whatever works for you, you really need to be looking at your lead data and looking at your lead sources that are working and what's not working. And you need data that's reliable. And this is kind of our way of shoring up that, hey, you know, all these leads that are created automatically through Calendly, we know to be from our website. And so when I look at that data at the end of the month, I know that it's good data. And the other thing you can do is within Calendly, and you can kind of um, adjust this however works for you, but you can ask them to respond to a couple of very basic questions within Calendly and you can embed the responses to that information directly into um, the Locus lead. So wherever it is in the basic notes, we have a whole bunch of fields, so I don't know what the heck I did with it, but, uh, oh, right here in the description, you know, if they say, I wanna talk to Mike about bankruptcy, then that's going to load right into the description in Locus. So that's going to be very visible when I pull up the lead. Uh, As you can see, I have a preset that because this is already a scheduled consultation, I have it drop right into our consultation set stage. And so you can make little adjustments that, like I said, because Calendly is pretty much everywhere, you can use some Google My Business, you can use it, you know, in so many different places you can create slightly different event names and have that match up so that when you are creating the lead within Locus, that you can kind of specify, okay, this lead came from Google My Business. This lead came from uh, my paid lead account or whatever. And you can adjust that however is appropriate. 
And this way, when you're doing your tabulation at the end of the month, then uh, you're having good data on all of that. Um, little breaking point. Any questions on any of that? Going once, going twice, going three times, sold. Uh, yeah, so, and, and I guess just to um, expand on that, so kind of like one of the pinnacles of endpoints, I suppose, in terms of your, your marketing metrics is an analysis called return on ad spend. And so what that means is that, you know, again, ideally on a monthly basis, you're going through everywhere that you spend money, or I suppose anywhere that you spend time in developing your reads, your lead sources. And you go through each of those categories and for each category, you're outlining your investment and your number of leads and your number of retains. And so if you really want like a, a good measure of how your different lead sources are performing, then you're able to break down your cost per lead and then your cost per retain. And particularly over a period of time, you know, that's, that's always going to move up and down a little bit on a monthly basis, but that, that's going to be the best way of measuring over time, whether your investments in various lead sources make sense. And so this is all kind of part of that concept. And um, uh, where, in your dashboard, you know, hopefully you're able to, you know, as you review this data, your conversion rates, your lead trends, um, you know, your retain rates and things like that, you're, you're going to get the most value from these different locations if you have good data as to where your leads are coming from. Hey, Michael, Jesse here. Can I ask, um, are you able to set it up where one of your reports is say like we have we advertise on the radio and we, we keep track of who comes through that um so you could constantly be tracking how many leads in a month came from radio or other sources or how do you run that report so some of that and and it's it's kind of um de dealing with I, I suppose a little bit of mixing and matching probably my approach to that would be to use a specific call tracking number for your radio ad. I like a program called CallRail, but I'm sure there's others that are out there. CallRail is probably the most common. Um, and we, we use CallRail. So for example, we use CallRail for our direct mail solicitations. And so when those solicitations go out, um, it has, and I suppose uh, and that's okay. I, I know how that works. The separate number tracking. Um, got it. Yeah. So, so when I do my end of the month report, Jesse, so, so it's a little bit tough. I, I, and, and maybe there's a way, and this is, you know, frankly, part of the, the reason why, why I wanted uh, the, the benefit of all of your thought processes. There may be a way of, kind of connecting call rail as a lead database uh, to lock us. What, what we've been doing is we have been reconciling data on a monthly basis with call rail, meaning, so we get all of our clients that, that come in, some of which are manually entered, some of which are automatically entered. And then at the end of each month, before I kind of put together my end of the month report, we'll go through everything in call rail and we'll update all of our leads within Locus to reflect the, the lead source that shows in call rail. And that's at least the best way that I've been able to do it. I think you can use the Zap here, right, Mike? So whenever calls come in, link it with Zap and create a lead like in Locus. That may be possible. Um, I just, I don't have it set up that way. So that's where I would certainly welcome anyone who's found a better way to, to, to do it. And Harry, by all means, you know, would welcome your, your input on that. Yeah, I think we can take a look at it. We can do a call and I think that will work. So whenever cool. calls come in, you know, like new call, I think create a new lead like in Locus and set the source, like how you're doing like on Calendly. All yeah, that, 
I mean, if we could find a way of connecting um, the information that CallRail gives us on origination of source with with the leads in Locus, then then frankly, that that would be next level. That would be awesome. I think you can do it. So you can create some custom fields and you can set those custom fields using the Zapier. Okay. So, yeah, I think so, I can add it, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can get with Ari on that and shoot anyone an email who is, or he can shoot anyone an email who's, who's interested. Um, uh, Follow-up communications at each stage. So... Uh, one thing, so before Locus rolled out its most recent series of updates that came out about a week ago, what we were doing, so again, something that you see very commonly in marketing softwares that usually you don't see in softwares that most attorneys use is, is a concept called drip follow-up, which isn't isn't anything too novel, but it's really just the idea of having the software, instead of you manually saying, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones haven't responded back to me and, you know, they, and I talked to them a week ago, you know, maybe I should give them a follow-up call. The idea is that the software is largely kind of taking charge of those follow-up emails with you and doing it not just once, but, you know, in, in the ideal several times. And also in the ideal, they're doing it both by, uh, email and by text message. So before Harry rolled out their most recent series of updates, we were kind of um, working on drips and we were connecting them again through Zapier through a software program called drip.com. And uh, more or less, the, the, the messages would correspond to the different stages. So if it was someone who was not yet scheduled, we would have, you know, the idea would be to have two, three emails and texts that say, hey, I see that you contacted us, schedule here. You know, likewise, if it's someone that we've sent a representation agreement to, then, uh, you know, three, four emails that say, hey, I see that your representation agreement hasn't come back. Don't forget to do this, do that. Uh, and... Now that is a capacity that Locus has internally um, where they can send multiple drips. One thing that I have proposed to Harry, and yes, I'm using this um, forum as, as a, uh, a way of encouraging Harry. Uh, one thing that I think would help with Locus's functionality is to have a way for the drips to automatically turn off and that could be if the client responds to the drip, or it might be that they turn off if you change stages. So maybe if the client responds and they complete their representation agreement or whatever, then you move them to a different stage and that's what deactivates the drips. But just know that that's a really powerful functionality. It's definitely something I encourage anyone who's not doing it um, to, to look into. When you're thinking about what content is right for your drips, my at least my personal advice is um, there. There is a huge amount of um, information that's available on the internet on how to set up what they call a funnel or, or drips or anything like that. And by all means, you should look at that stuff and steal ideas that are already out there. But don't overthink it. For the most part, you know, short, punchy, genuine emails that don't sound advertisey are probably going to do better than a long-winded three-page email that, you know, most of your potential clients are going to have their eyes glazed over at anyway. So don't overthink it. You know, done, done is better than perfect. Um, and kind of likewise, the other um, encouragement that I'll give to Harry is if we, the I think, I, I'm a huge believer that text messages are probably the best way of communicating with potential clients. It would be great if we could get the text message trips to, to be two ways so that we could um, get responses from clients in addition to sending out the messaging. Next uh, up, we will have the text messaging. Do it, text messaging. Cool. <laughs> um, 
sending out representation agreements. So I, I'm actually going to kind of open up the floor on this. We do use a software. We use a software called Formstack, but I know, but that is not native to um, Locus. And so I, I kind of want to open up the floor and see what people are doing for sending out representation agreements and how they feel about it. We've been using HelloSign, and um, it's worked really well, but we haven't tried to use it yet through Locus. Yeah, we use, um, for at least social security cases, we have, it's, 10 page, it's a 10-page PDF that we can generate through Locus, um, and we use HelloSign to get it signed to. Um, the only thing uh, I don't enjoy is... Uh, I still having trouble with the phone number formatting. Did I talk to Harry about before how it always puts it in American style, the one plus. So I go through and change those before I send them out, but it's been working. Other, and then I've also automated an email to go out to my clients to say, this is what the hello sign email is going to look like. So if you don't have it in you know, two hours, check your spam folder. Got it. Yeah, that's good. Let's see, Jesse, Tamara. Clark, any, any feedback on uh, what's working for you on document signing? We've been, a lot of people just send them back um, physical copies. And I like the hello sign idea. I need to look into that because I've been allowing people to respond with an email that says, I agree to this agreement and, and figure that's good enough for, for a signature. Yeah, and, and I think that's a valid point, Jesse. I think more, you know, it's our, our, at least my instinct when I first opened up the firm was really putting a lot of weight into having this, this perfectly manufactured representation agreement that was, you know, obnoxiously long and captured every, you know, possible contingency that could happen in a representation agreement. And, and over time, my, my agreements have become progressively shorter, and, and I'm a big believer that, that you want to keep them as lean as they possibly can. Because at the end of the day, it almost, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter what the representation agreement says, but either you have a happy client or you don't. And if they're pissed off, then, you know, even if your agreement says that there are contingencies for them being pissed off, uh, you know, a negative review is still going to impact the perception of your your firm and and so you know providing all those different contingencies isn't always going to make that much of a difference so so jesse i, I think your, your mindset's probably right that just having a psychological acceptance is more important than having everything in the written agreement but at least well, for me it's it's nice to have the the e-sign document no I, we definitely send out an agreement and they're agreeing to that there's there's a couple of page document um, yeah, it's not a, not a handshake deal. So, so I'll say, so I guess at, at least for me, you know, and, and, and it may be that, you know, one of you all at some point can present on, on to, to show us how things are working for you with kind of the native hello sign. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of having at least an e-sign process. We, I'm, I'm a bigger advocate of having the agreement go out by text message. And I, I find that our retain rate is a lot higher if we can, while we're on the, the consultation call, uh, actually engage with the client and say, okay, this agreement's now in your text messages. Can you pull this up and review it with me while, while we're on the phone here? I find that that, that leads to a, a much higher retain rate. Um, uh, but I, I think maybe a self, um, an opportunity within our office is to find a smoother way of sending the agreement out automatically. Right now, it's a little clunky. I think the ability to communicate by text is really awesome. And it helps me with my um, creative clients, um, music and media related clients, uh, individual artists and things. When I'm dealing with uh, corporate clients that need some help with their trademark registrations, um, that texting doesn't quite work because they, you know, they don't want to communicate on their cell phones. 
Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that's that's probably a fair 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 point that I'm that I'm sure applies pretty pretty broadly that that consumer clients are going to be more responsive to text message than than corporate. Um, let's see. The last topic that I wanted to kind of open up to the floor is to see if anyone is using, and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but is anyone using um, Locus's intake forms at any stage in their consultation process? And if so, Tom, I see a, a hand up there. You want to share a little bit about how that's going for you? Yeah, and I've used it. Um, I use it to get the basic information. Um, I've been having some trouble integrating with my calendar, but that's because I have two offices and uh, apparently I don't own one of my calendars. My assistant does. So uh, we're in the process of cleaning the multi, multiple calendars up, uh, but it, but I, I can send them a different form on any different type of case and, you know, get them to put their information in, uh, which has been very helpful. Um, especially on the social security side, uh, when I know I need certain answers to, to get a certain appeal filed, then they can go through that. And I, I just say, hey, do the best you can. We'll talk about it when we're on the phone. But it, it gives them a chance to prepare all that information and saves a lot of time in the consult too, not looking up the address of this doctor or that doctor. It's, right. yeah, it's worked pretty well. Very cool. And do you have, do you have the responses to your form loading right into fields within Locus or are you just keeping the entire form? I, ha I haven't done that yet uh, because I had them set up, I think before they integrated or if they were, um, I haven't done that. Um, so I, I haven't done it yet, but I would really like to make my life just that much easier. Got it. Yeah. So we're, we're starting to uh, integrate some of Locus's internal forms but we're right now we're just using them after they're retained for, for the onboarding process. Uh, the, you know, this is probably another place where, where at least my, my office can do a better job is using those forms, at least on a limited basis to capture some lead based data. Uh, but just, I, I guess I'll, I'll just put that on the radar for all of you to maybe take a look at and um, welcome any of your, your feedback. If you find that it's going successfully for you. Uh, Harry, that's at least pretty much all of that that I had. Certainly open up the, the floor to comments if anyone has anything they want to add, anything they find to be very successful for them on, on the lead side. Well, I'm hoping I've put in, in we're well, left with Harry, I guess, and put in Trello, and I'm hoping for more integration between the custom fields and the ability to build the forms because I have, like, I have a lot of corporate clients that I would resend a lot of auto-populated forms and then just need them to fill in some of the information. So if I can um, add that as custom information in the under the client so it auto-populates the form so I can send that out, that would make life a lot easier. And I don't know where that, um, where that is uh, with uh, Locus at this point. Gotcha. So... Uh... Harry, any any feedback on some of those developments? Tomorrow we we haven't looked at it yet. So maybe next month. So currently we are working on some updates on the forms and we are working on the two-way text messaging. So that's something we are working for the next update. And normally we take updates like month by month. And after that, you know, like we are going to take a look at it, like take a stab at it, like how 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 that can work. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, because I think. Tamara, if I'm um, following you right, because you, you can auto-populate documents, but it sounds like you're auto-populating forms, and I at least um, and, yeah, and I guess they, they would be fillable forms. But like for example, the you know the the company's um, business, like CRA or IRS, whatever business number. Um, if if that company does like. 20, 30, 40, 50 of those forms a year. I don't want to have to fill in that information each time. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't um, done it yet, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to using the intake forms um, because ideally I'd like to get to a point where um, 
I'm charging for consultations and I'd like to have the in intake form completed uh, before confirming the calendar um, appointment where they complete the form, they make a payment and then confirm calendar. So I'm not there yet, but I'm even more beginning stage than that. I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to pull all of my um, work related client related emails from Gmail over. So I've been trying that not quite working yet, but I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm very hopeful about this. I, I just see so, so much incredible potential. I just have to figure it out. <laughs> Francis, we can do a call after this and I can show you, like I can help you out. Okay, yeah. Anyone, anything else? Well, this is Jesse. On the email, I was going to say I resisted connecting them for until a couple of weeks ago, and I'm happy as can be. I, I keep moving attachments over to client files. Um, what, I, what I didn't like at first is that it created a folder for every single client. Um, and so that's a lot of folders where I only had a few email ones before. But, but once I got over that... Um, it's been very useful. And as far as the intake form, Terry just went through with me yesterday and I, hopefully by the end of the today, our website contact form is going to be a locus form rather than the one that I had. And it will automatically create a lead that then goes into a workflow and notifies the people in the office to do a few things um, rather than just getting some email from our web form that we then have to create our own lead. Yeah, very valid point. And, and just to add to that a little bit, so, so I showed the example of how we've integrated Calendly into leads, but just know that there are a pretty vast number of different programs. You know, Calendly is like one example of a place where you can get data to add into Locus. But if you, like a very common um, pay-per-click hosting site is called Unbounce. And so some of your PPC guys might be using that. You can connect Unbounce responses, like almost anything that leads to emails in your inbox, you can use as the basis of a zap, is, which is the, the term for when something um, triggers Zapier to connect one program to another. Uh, almost anything that, that looks like a form that's in your email, uh, email inbox, you can use as the basis for Zap to add data into Locus. And it's not just restricted to leads. You know, if if you're getting forms from your clients after their clients and you want to add some of that data into Locus, you can probably do it with the Zap. Well, I think uh, hearing no further objections, um, I, I think that pretty much covers us for today. Harry, anything, uh, anything you want to educate us on? Let me, yeah, let me share something because everyone wants to you know, like automate few things. So let me share my screen and show you like how you can do some more stuff. So now like in Locus, you can create scheduling pages. So scheduling pages are like Calendly. So you can create like a different scheduling pages. So something like this. So I will show you here. So you can set your meeting info, like how you do like in Calendly. You can select the calendars, which calendars you can link. You can even have the advanced one and you can link it to multiple calendars. You can put a booking flow and the opening hours. So you can select like what time you are available and you can create custom fields. See what I'm doing here. So I have name, email, case description, preferred, like preferred method, like how to contact them. And then I have like a drop down options, like they want to be connected by text message, phone message and email. And it looks similar to Calendly, so they can select your clients, they can select the time, they can submit the, the information and they can confirm it. So once this is submitted, you may want to create a lead like in Locus, like how Michael showed. So how you will do like in Locus now is we just launched like a new, new trigger. So you will select a trigger and your trigger would be 
new scheduler appointment. So you will select it. You will select like whose scheduling page you want to connect to. I have only myself and you will select the meetings which I have. You see like I have three different events here. So I will select 30 minute meeting. So after this, in the workflow, you can do anything. Like you can create a lead. So you will say create a lead. You will say next. Map the fields which are coming from, from the scheduler. So I will do his first name. I will map the last name to a last name. I will create an email also here. So add an email and map the email to the email. So after this is created, you may want to send them an email after three days, right? Like how Mike said, like you may want to do a drip campaign. So automatically send them an email or reminder or something. So you can use it like different ways. I'm just showing you like how you will do that. So you will select an action. You will say you want to send them an email after three days. So time delay, select what kind of delay type you want to have. You want to set like uh, you want to set three days or five days. You can do is like this. You can add here three and then select days. So this is one way to do it. Other is you change it or you want to send it like, let's say you want to send this email only on Monday. So you can select Monday and you say like, you want to send this email at 1 p.m. So depending on what kind of delay you have, so we have two different delays. Once you select a delay, then you can send an email or a text message. So all these things you can do like, like right here, like in lockers. The only thing is you know, like you have to create like your scheduler like in lockers. So similar to how, how I created. So I created these scheduling pages in lockers instead of Calendly. And then you can link all these things like inbuilt like in lockers only. And if you want to use Calendly, then you have to use Zapier like how Mike is doing it. Any questions? So with that, um... Is your calendar private so that they will see it? Yes. Because that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep the calendar private until I have more information about the prospect and then share. I, okay, so for that, what you should do is, you know, like you can create like a form first mm -hmm. and then you know, like when the form is submitted, send an email to them about, about the calendar, like a link to the calendar. Yeah, that's what I've been doing manually. So, no, you can send it automatically. Mm -hmm. So, whenever the intake form is submitted, so what you will do is you will create an intake form. So, simple intake form, you can embed that in your website. So, let me show you here. So, I have this intake form here, simple intake form, contact us webinar. So, I will embed this intake form in my website. It will look like this. Also, we are working on where you will be able to change the look of this intake form to match it as your website. Mm -hmm. So once this intake form is submitted, you can send them an email. So what you will do is you will create an automation. You will say, I did wrong. So we'll go to the workflows. You will say whenever the intake form is submitted. So trigger would be intake form submitted. Select an intake form. And after this, when you send an email to them, send an email and in this, send a link to your calendar. So there's a step in there where I need, I would want to review the information that was submitted. Okay, so if you want to review it, then put a delay, like don't send an email right away, okay. then okay. put a delay like next day. And then you can stop it. Or you can put a condition here, like you can put an if and else condition, Create a field, like a custom field, and then put a logic condition. And the logic condition you can add, like if, let's say you know, like you have approved or you have reviewed. If the reviewed is, is true, then send an email. If review is false, like you haven't reviewed, like you haven't reviewed, you haven't marked it as true, you know, like it will not send an email. I think the delay is... <laughs> easier for me to, <laughs> but that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else, any questions? We still have five minutes. 
I think uh, this today was helpful because I'd like to see what other people are doing with, with their forms, uh, basically so I can uh, copy it and <laughs> use it for my own benefit. Um, one of the things I thought of today too, is I wonder if, if, if there is, or if you could make, um, I, like you have the, the sandbox.lock is if there could be one for um, users to, to play around on uh, that you could show us stuff on too, but then, uh, then we could all kind of mess around with it um, as well. Sure. What's the sandbox? Oh, somebody else said the same thing. <laughs> Okay, so Sandbox is, you know, like it's my account. So Sandbox is an account where I give the demos. So if you all want to have access to it, I can share the username and password for it. So you can play around in it. So you can create your, your workflows, you can play with the data, you can create like workflows you want to test it out. And so you, I can, if you need access to it, send an email to me, I will share the username and password for that. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of of sharing knowledge and sharing information. And like when I create a form, like, like I know that a number of Canadian immigration lawyers have now signed on. Um, I, if I go through the pain of creating a form that I think would be a use, like usable by others, I'd be happy to post it if there was a place for people to share um, documents that other people might wanna use like in take forms. Like that's a library. Something. So that's something we will be working in future. But if you want to share with, I know you like you are the whole, like one big group, right? Of all the immigration attorneys who are started using the lockers, Tamara. So give us a link to the form and tell, like, tell us like with whom you want to share it. For example, let's say you want to share with Robin, right? Or you want to share with Lab. So give me the form, send me the forms you want to share with them we can share with them. But currently we don't have the library. That's something we are going to do like in future, definitely. But even now, if you want to share the whole form, whole workflows with others, you can tell us and we can create a copy of it and we can create that in their account. It doesn't take much time for us to do that, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Is Robin, if that's something you're interested in, I'm perfectly happy to do that. Is there a folder on the Facebook group to upload? documents this year? I think we haven't created it. I think there should be. The Facebook you can upload. Yeah, you can upload on the Facebook group. Yeah. But this will have them, like they don't need to recreate it from, from the images. Like they can just tell us like what they want to share and we can share with the with other user. Yeah. It's just that the immigration might not apply to me, but if I saw it like on, in a folder in the Facebook group, it might trigger some ideas. So maybe do both. <laughs> yeah, I think if you guys can share your workflows like in lockers, like with others, you know, like how you're creating it, like maybe like few steps, that would help others people to you know, like to, to conceptualize like how others are doing it. Yeah, and, and the pipelines, like I thought that was very helpful, the pipeline you showed because there were a lot of steps that I think are helpful that I wasn't necessarily adding. And maybe you can do this call like every month, like one of you, you know, like, so we may get like more people from next time. Like we are going to post it like on, on YouTube and, and you know, like maybe like one of you can share their workflow like every month. Sure, I think that's cool. And I know a lot of people, you know, like they're very tech savvy. You know, like we don't have Ralph here. Ralph is like, he's using a lot. We have one big team, like German team. They have like their own developers. They're four developers. Their team is like <laughs> as big as our team. Wow. And yeah, so more people will join in. I think this would be really good. You know, like when you can share knowledge with others, yeah. So in the sandbox, would that be a way, um, because I'm nervous about trying things and then I don't know what the customer ex client experience is gonna be like. So if we're playing in the sandbox, does that give us the opportunity to see that? You can. Without, yeah. actually, without actually jeopardizing a potential client 
situation. Yeah. Okay, that'd be ter- tremendous. I think you can also create a fake client. I did that with another email address. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? This has been very helpful. Thanks very much. Yeah, Bye. Very <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you very much, Michael, for doing this. And thank you. All right, guys. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye. Yeah.